Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So as promised, I have made more minimalism content for you. So if you haven't subscribed, please make sure you do. Now I am dying to know what is it that triggered you or pushed you or like ignited your interest in minimalism? What was that defining moment where you went, oh wow, this is amazing, I need this in my life or I need to learn more about this, like what was it? I know for me, it was when I had my son Rocco and I was suffering from post-traumatic stress syndrome and postnatal depression. I felt incredibly overwhelmed and exhausted and suffocated by all the stuff around me and I just couldn't see the, the forest from the trees. But by getting rid of stuff in my life and saying no to the excess and making proactive decisions and taking control of my decisions as well, massively contributed towards the healing process. So if you could let me know what it was in your moment, that defining a heart moment or that trigger, let me know by putting a comment in the comment box below because I'm dying to hear. I find this subject so incredibly interesting. Now, this video that I've made for you is actually my top seven bits of advice for minimalists and for new people leaning into minimalism and learning all about it. I thought by giving you my words of wisdom from experience, this might help you really embrace minimalism or take your love of minimalism to a deeper level. So let's get started. Number one is lean in. This is a journey, not a race. Let minimalism organically grow and infiltrate into all the different components in your life. Don't push it. You don't just wake up one day and declutter your home by doing a spring clean and call yourself a minimalist. It doesn't necessarily work that way. Often it starts in like one drawer, one cupboard, and you start to see the benefits of it and then let it apply in other areas of your life. Now the home is a very often, it was for myself, a very popular place to start minimalism. But remember, it can actually grow into so many other areas of your life, such as your finances, such as your food, such as your wardrobes, such as your friendship and social circles, even your careers and routine and your mindset. It is a journey, not a race. So let it grow organically and let it grow at your pace. Advice number two is minimalism forces you to be organized. So you must be prepared to invest some extra time out of your day to stay on top of things and to stay organized. Little things like making sure you've done all your washing because your wardrobe is now a lot smaller is going to make it so much easier to continue on embracing minimalism. Even for myself, things like making sure I've done all the washing up or the dishwasher is unpacked because I only have a small capsule collection of plates and cutlery in my life. And the same for food. I apply a just-in-time technique to my pantry and my fridge. I buy things when I actually need them because this helps reduce the amount of food wastage in my home. So I have to always make sure I've got the right ingredients for the meal that I'm gonna prepare that night or for that week. So it really does force you to stay on top. So be prepared to invest some extra time into keeping your life organized. Advice number three is about inner strength and it actually goes both ways. So when I first fell into minimalism, I, from the people who I love, love, love dearly, copped a lot of criticism, judgment, frustration, like I was laughed at, but I had to learn to stay strong and be very resilient in those situations and not get offended like I normally would. But to explain, this is important to me, this is helping me and to learn to take really great responsible ownership of minimalism in my life. Now, ironically, I actually ended up inspiring those people who laughed and mocked me for this. And I ended up you know, being a source of inspiration for them and a guide to them in helping them incorporate minimalism into their own life. So be prepared, you're gonna cop some flack from people. And that is perfectly normal and that is perfectly fine. But work on your own inner strength so you know exactly how to handle this in a tactful way that is helpful to the person who is directing it at you. Now the other side of this is you'll get minimalists who will also laugh, criticize, mock, judge you. And this is just, I guess, the yin and the yang and the beauty behind minimalism. Often when I create a video around minimalism, there is always at least one person who says that I'm not really a minimalist. 
um, I like too many luxury items or my wardrobe or color palette is too neutral that and therefore it doesn't make me a minimalist or they'll comment about things in my home and, and I've, it's the same way I've had to learn to be strong and resilient and come back to myself and look at there is no true definition of a minimalist it is your own journey as I said it is your own path and whenever someone tries to do this to you just look at the progress and the process you have gone through where have you come from where are you right now and where are you going it is your own personal and private journey and no one should judge you but the best way to handle this is to stay strong and centered in your own skin so that it doesn't affect you and you can continue on embracing this amazing lifestyle movement regardless of what people say or think around you Advice number four is to accept and understand and make peace that there are going to be some limitations of minimalism in your life. Now these may be permanent or these may be simply temporary. But for example, I've shared with you in my other videos that I wouldn't normally buy much makeup. But since I now make my own YouTube videos and I'm often doing my own hair and makeup, I need a lot more makeup because it's a part of my creative process. I've had to accept that. It is part of my natural path and my natural evolution. And that is fine. That's no problem. So I don't beat myself up when I have to go and buy some more foundation or a different color eyeshadow palette or some different mascara. It is what it is. I'm not about beating myself up over this. But then also remember there are going to be times where things are just temporarily not minimalist. You become temp a temporary maximalist. So for example, I'm having a baby in almost eight weeks time and I actually got rid of all my baby stuff. So I have had to understand I'm going to have to buy all this stuff again. And of course I will be buying it in a responsible way. But I am working with the limitations of minimalism, applying the principles to me, which is buy what I love, value, use and appreciate. And that is it. But I understand that this is temporary. My home is not going to be filled with prams and cots and bottles and all sorts of wonderful things that you need when you have a baby. It's just going to be for the certain phases of my life. And also having a baby is a beautiful thing. It's a passage. It's an incredibly exciting time. So I do need to understand and make peace with letting new things back into my life because sometimes that can make me feel anxious. Advice number five is to be proactive and take control when it comes to what you free up in your life as a result of minimalism and the benefits from minimalism. So for example, when you learn to say, no, I'm not going to buy another jumper for this winter, or I'm not going to waste money doing this or that or going to that event because I don't really value it. You're going to discover that you have so much more time to yourself and in your life and also you will most likely find yourself saving a lot of money. Now this is one of the temptations or distractions that can come as a result of minimalism. Do not get tempted to go and then blow that money on other wasteful things in your life. You don't want to say no to an event that you didn't want to go to to find yourself saying yes to another event that you don't really want to go to either. You need to make sure that as you free things up in your life, such as creating a free afternoon to yourself or freeing up, say, $50 from not wasting it on a new item, make sure that you proactively do something with that time or money. So, for example, you could transfer that $50 into a separate savings account or you could even do the $1,000 project. Or for example, if you say no to doing something in the afternoon and you free up your time, go and use that time purely for yourself that fills your own bucket, as Rocco says. So use that time to maybe go and get a massage. Use that time to go and have a hot bath or you go for a walk in the park or spend time with your family and friends. Make sure that you proactively do something with the time and money that you're freeing in your life and you redirect it to something more meaningful and passionate in your life that makes you feel good. Advice number six is to feed your inspiration. As I said, minimalism is a journey. It's a story. And there are always going to be setbacks and challenges that come your way. Every now and again, I fall off the path and I find myself buying multiple things that I don't need or getting distracted or saying yes to things that I shouldn't really be doing or don't really want to do. So what I highly recommend is you continuously feed and grow your passion and love of minimalism. Have a look at my Instagram account. You'll see all these different minimalists that I'm following. Go and find out about new blog posts that have come up or go and watch a documentary such as The Minimalists or read a book around minimalism. 
it really is incredible how much it can bring you back on your path again and help remove those distractions again. Idea number seven, and I think this is the most beautiful way to end this video, so I'm really proud of that. And that is to acknowledge the gratitude that comes from incorporating minimalism into your life. It is very easy to get frustrated or feel like you're depriving yourself when it comes to minimalism, thinking, why don't I have nothing to wear? Or why do I not have you know something that I feel like eating in my home? Or you know, why is my life feeling a bit boring? That is where you have lost track of your big why behind minimalism. When I experience this for myself, I remind myself as to my benefits of minimalism. For me, it makes me feel like I have so much more mental clarity and focus, which then fuels my motivation and determination in life. I find that when I incorporate minimalism in my home and I stop and appreciate it, I realize how much more enjoyable my home feels, how much more harmonious the space is around me, and also how much quicker and easier it is to keep my house clean and tidy. So on a regular basis, stop and take the time to acknowledge and show gratitude and appreciation as to what minimalism brings in your life. And it might be something really simple like giving yourself an extra 20 minutes per day to just have some time on your own to meditate, to read something, to look at something, or just to simply zone out. These are all incredibly beautiful, beneficial things in our lives that add so much more value to our physical and mental happiness. Now guys, if you have enjoyed this video, please make sure you subscribe because I have a secondary video coming up where I share with you even more bits of wisdom and advice around minimalism. So switch on the notification button as well as subscribing. And don't forget to go and check out all the minimalist people that I'm following on my Instagram account because they help inspire me. And from this, I help create more minimalism content for you. All right, ciao for now.